Hello, welcome to this uh, session. This is the second lecture in a series of uh, lectures on hidden Markov uh, models. In the previous session, I explained uh, the essence of discrete Markov processes and hidden Markov models, how we build the models, how we determine the model parameters, and some uh, elementary uh, questions we can ask and answer uh, using the model uh, parameters. Towards the end of the lecture, I also uh, mentioned the three principal uh, questions we can ask and answer using hidden Markov models. Today, in this video, uh, we'll focus on the first principle uh, problem we uh, can address using uh, hidden Markov models, and which is computing the likelihood of observing a sequence of observations given a model. Uh, suppose we are given a sequence of observations and some competitive uh, models. Now the question is, which of the models likely produced this sequence of observations? This is essentially what we do with voice recognitions. We have a, uh, an audio clip representing a spoken word, and we want to map this word to one of the competitive words. In my uh, previous uh, video, I mentioned two competitive words, for example, inconclusive and uh, irreversible. So if uh, we give a computer an audio clip and wish to uh, wish the, the computer to decide for either of these two words, what it does actually is calculate the likelihood probability for both models and the one with the higher likelihood probability will be uh, taken as a representative to the spoken word. So today I'm going to uh, explain how we can calculate the likelihood probability of observing a sequence of uh, symbols given a model. So this is what we do. Suppose Alice posted on her Instagram account the following uh, sequence of observations telling us how she arrived at her office. But she does not tell us how the weather was and where she was. So it could be either in Addis Ababa or in Oxford. Suppose we have the models for both cities. We know Alice's habits when she is in one of these states or in one of these cities. So given competitive models, is it possible to calculate the likelihood and then determine where Alice is? Remember here, we are not interested to uncover the hidden states. We're not interested really in the weather. The weather is here only a bridge to tell us where Alice is. We are interested only in the, uh, in, in the weather, only indirectly, because the observations are weather dependent. So what we do is, given this sequence of observation, and Oxford, the model for Oxford, it could be generated on each day, it could be generated in one of these states. So we have to consider all possible combination of states. We have to calculate the likelihood of observing the, the observation on these states, and we have to add the, the probabilities to determine whether or not Alice was in Oxford. Why? Because could Ali, it could have been sunshine on the first day and Alice cycled to office, 
all cloudy and still Alice cycled to office or it was rainy and Alice still decided to cycle to office. Likewise for the second date and so on. So, which is why we have to consider all possibilities. Now, if we just consider one of the states, for example, this one, of all uh, states, uh, this could have been one of the possibilities that it was sunshine the whole time. Or it could have been sunshine for six days and on the last date, cloudy. Or it could have been sunshine six days in a row and then on the final day, rainy. All together, we have three discrete states. We have seven observations. That means we have n the power of t or c the power of seven different combinations. And in each sequence of states, we could have observed this sequence of observations. So we have to consider all three the power of seven combinations of state chains. We have to calculate the probability of observing the sequence of observations in each state and then add. This is how the likelihood probability for a given model can be calculated. So first, for example, if we just consider all sunshines, the probability of experiencing this chain of states is calculated like this. On the first state, we have pi s, the initial uh, probability for sunshine. And then the weather stays for six days on the same, uh, in the same state. That means here we have the, the, the uh, term for that. Now this is just the sequence of experiencing this uh, sequence of states. And then now we have to calculate the probability of experiencing this sequence of observations, observations in this sequence of states. And this is how we can calculate the probability of observation. That means the probability of observing cycling in state S is given by BS of Y. The probability of driving in state S is given by BS of D. The probability of observing again cycling in state S three times as BS of Y and two times the probability of observing driving in state S. So here now, two possible terms. One is the state sequence and one is the observation sequence with corresponding probabilities. And finally, to determine the probability that these two things happen at the same time, we have to multiply with this one. So this is the probability of observation given in all sunshine states. And this is the, the probability. Now this is only one of the, the power of t possibilities. So for each possibility here, for this case, we have one, two, three, four, five, six multiplications. For this one, we have one, two, three, four, five, and six multiplications. So for, for each combination, we have two times t minus one multiplications. But altogether, we have n to the power of t different combinations. So that means two times t in the power of t multiplications. And then we have to add in the power of t minus one times. So this is a very expensive process. This is just to determine the likelihood in one model. Altogether, we have to do two t in the power of t operations. The question is, is there a more efficient way of calculating the likelihood probability? And the answer is yes. And this approach is called the forward 
algorithm, or sometimes it's referred to as the alpha algorithm. In fact, we have already briefly mentioned this approach in our previous uh, video, so I will elaborate on this in more detail today. Suppose we ask the following question, given these two observations, what is the probability that the, the day was sunny on Tuesday? We don't care about Monday. We are interested only on Tuesday. What's the probability that it was sunny on Tuesday, given the observations? Remember, I have already highlighted this in my last video. In heat mark of models, we have to always begin with the observation, all the observations we have up to that time. Because our access to the hidden states are the observations we have. So now coming back to this question, what is the probability that it was uh, sunny on Tuesday? It could have been sunny on Monday, cloudy or rainy. And from rainy, it could have transited to sunny with this probability could have been transited from cloudy with this probability or from sunny with this probability. These are the possibilities. So by combining these uh, probabilities, we can determine the probability of being sunny given to these two observations. So that means the probability of, sorry, the probability of observing this symbol cycling on the first date, it can be calculated as pi r b r uh, y. So this is the probability of observing cycling in the rainy state. And then the probability of observing d in this state is calculated as first a transition takes place and then b s of d. And then the probability of observing this symbol on this is pi c. And then the, the probability of observing the probability of observing cycling on cloudy, it is BYC, and then it transits, and then we observe the, the, the sorry, we observe the, the, the symbol. We will do again for this one. So this is the probability of observing these two symbols on Tuesday being sunny. But on Tuesday it can be not only sunny, it could have been cloudy or it could have been rainy. So these are the, the, the different possibilities. So alpha 2, 2 refers to the second symbol or the, 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 for the time t, b at time t being in r in the rainy state and having observed all the, the, the observations. Alpha 2 here refers to a time t2 we are in a cloudy state and observe having observed all the symbols up to that point and alpha 2s likewise. Now these are given these symbols and the model for Oxford, these are the different possibilities to observe these two symbols. That means on both days could have been rainy with this probability, or from rainy it could have transited to cloudy, from rainy it could have transited to sunny, or from cloudy transited to rainy, cloudy to transit to cloudy, and cloudy to S, S to, to R, S to C, or S to S. With all this combination, we could have observed these two symbols. Now we can describe this in a more compact way. Consider this, this case. The probability of experiencing rain on the second date can be described as, it could have been rain and transited to rain, could have been cloud and transited to rain, and so on. The probability of observing this image when it was rain is pi s b s of y. Right, pi s, the, the, the initial probability for rain, and the probability of observing cycling is b s y. Uh, 
okay sorry we are coming from here for now okay so for, for this case the initial probability of pi s and then the probability of observing uh, cycling in this state is b s y now after we have arrived here using uh, the, the transition asr we could have observed the driving with this probability likewise for cloudy pi c times b c y gives the probability of observing this symbol in this state and then we turn this from c to r c to r and then observe the uh, uh, driving in, in this state and for the rain also first uh, pi r and then uh, y sorry pi r and then y um, b r y for, for this one and then we transit it to this one and then observe it, uh, the driving in this case but this one here you see pi s b s y we have already defined as alpha one uh, s alpha one s simply means the probability of observing the first symbol in a state s likewise this one we can depict as alpha one c because alpha one c means the probability of observing the first image in state c and so on so by replacing this with, with the alphas we can describe this in a more compact way like this. So this one refers to the probability of observing this in this state. So it's common for all of them. Then we can add the probability of this, this, and this. You see the, this addition and the, uh, this addition and then the next addition here. So this gives us the probability of observing the symbols on the second date and the second date being on Tuesday being rainy. Now, if we want to calculate, for example, the probability that it was sunny on Wednesday, given the, the symbols in the past, we can describe it like this. But this one already we have calculated previously. This one was alpha to r, I just uh, mentioned a while ago. Likewise, we can calculate alpha to c, we can calculate alpha to s. So what changed is now from alpha to s, we transited to s with a probability of, uh, with a transition probability of ars. From this, uh, from the cloudy state, we transited with a pro transition probability of ses. And from here, we transited with a probability of ASS. And then when we are here, we observe it cycling. So we can express alpha 3 of S as a summation of these alphas combined with the, tran the corresponding transitions. And then when we arrive here, we calculate the, the probability of observing this symbol in this case. Likewise, we can calculate for, for C alpha 3 C, we can calculate for alpha 3 R by just taking into account the, the previous alphas. This simplifies now the computation. Likewise, we just progress towards the, the end. So this is the way we calculate for, for the three cases, and then we come to the conclusion. Finally, now, if when we come here, we just add all the, the alphas. This gives us the probability of observing these symbols in all the different possible combinations. So the alpha approach minimizes the computation in terms of multiplication. We have n times n minus one times t minus one plus n, because n at last we have to add and then the addition n times n minus one times t minus one, if we just remove the, 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 the minus one, overall the, the, the combination is n squared t. This is combined, you know, compared to the dynamic programming we just saw, 
This is a reduction from two times t n to the power of, this is the nasty, a nasty number, a very, very large number. Now we reduce this giant number to n square t. By so doing, we can calculate the likelihood of observing the sequence of observations in different models and the one which had the biggest number we assume is where the observations were produced. So as a summary, the alpha um, approach is then as follows. We define a term called alpha t of i. t refers we are interested in the observation made up to time t. And i is, we are at that time, at time t in state i. So this one is decide the probability of observing O1, O2 up to time t. And at time t, the state is in Si given this lambda. We have three different uh, stages in the initialization phase. We begin from the first symbol. The first, the probability of observing the first symbol in state i is simply the, the observation, the, the initial probability pi i times pi i of the probability of observing O1. O we have to do n operations because we have n different states. Then we move one step forward, and this can be done not by recomputing everything all over again, but by taking the, the alphas and the transitions into account. And then we calculate the probability of observing uh, OT plus one in the specific state. So here, to calculate alpha T plus one, J, that means at time T plus one, we are in state J and we observe up to O plus one. But this we don't do all over again, as I said, we just calculate alpha Ti, and then we transit from this state, from the i state to the j's state, because we are in the j's state. And then we take into account the probability of observing OT plus one in the j state as well. For this operation requires now, because uh, first we have n, n state for each, each time, and then because we have to move forward up to t minus one, we have to do uh, t minus one times. And then we have to terminate by adding all the, the alphas to calculate the likelihood probability or the probability of observing the sequence of observations given lambda. By so doing, we can calculate the likelihood. And this is how all uh, voice recognition uh, systems today uh, function. And you can see that uh, voice recognition requires intense operations. Even when we apply uh, the alpha algorithm, still we need uh, intense operation, which is why uh, today uh, when you consider uh, Siri or uh, Amazon's uh, uh, Alexa compute voice recognition, not on your smartphone, but on a distributed cloud where we have sufficient computing uh, resources. So by this, we come to the conclusion of the second lecture. Next, we're going to consider another principal problem, which is the uncovering of hidden states. And I will explain you why we need to uncover hidden states and how we can do uh, this. Uh, thank you for uh, your interest in, in this session and see you next time. Bye from me.